Living Psychology, it's great to have you here. I'm Priya Verghese and today we'll be taking a look at the topic Obstacles in Lifespan Psychology. So this topic is quite important. It has already appeared twice as a 10 mark question and three times as a three mark question. So if you can all turn over to page 16 in block one of your coursework, um, that is part of your Lifespan Psychology coursework, we can just quickly go through the main points. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Right, so you can see the different questions that have appeared. I already told you that about two 10 mark questions have come and the three mark questions have come three times. So you can see that as listed here, uh, one of the three mark questions was a repeat, which is why I have only included it once in here. Um, you can also see that it doesn't come as a single 10 mark question. It's always in combination with another question like describe the various methods and then also explain the obstacles or explain the concept of human development and then discuss the various obstacles. I hope you're all at page 16 of your course book. Let's take a look at the first problem that is faced by researchers. The first is representative sample. So what does that mean? Let's start reading from line 3. The data collection from the school children is easy for the researcher, but in the case of newborn or infant, it is not that much easy. See that? Okay. They often face strong parental objection and their mood. Right. Now, getting older adolescents and young adults who are not attending school to volunteer as a subject is also difficult because they may not be available for study at one particular place. So getting them is also difficult. Why? Because they are not available at one particular place. There you go. The difficulty arises with the young adult, middle-aged adults or old age person when many persons shy away from the testing situation. Why do they shy away? Because they don't want to disclose their personal detail to the researcher even if they are paid off. Okay, so let us, let us take a look at what this means. The first thing that we learned was that data collection with children, like school children, is easy because they are in one location. But in the case of uh, children who are just newly born or infants, it's not very easy because parents object and they are not very happy about having research done on their children. For the same reason, research done on newborns or children or infants is, is actually very low. Then in the case of school children, it's easy because they are all in a single place. But as you go older, like older adolescents and young adults who are working, they are not available in a single place. They're all distributed across different places, working in different locations. And so coordinating a study and getting them to take part or volunteer as a subject in the research becomes very difficult. The last thing is that these people don't disclose their personal details to the researcher, even if they are paid off and therefore the research may not actually be accurate. So this is the problem that is faced in getting a representative sample. As you already know, you must be knowing, when you do a research, you're doing it on a small group of people and then using the information you get from the small group of people, you then tend to extrapolate or say, okay, if one portion of the population is showing this, then a bigger population showing the same characteristics as in the sample people will also be showing similar kind of traits. That's the assumption that we reach towards the end of a research. So this is why getting a proper sample is very important. The second point is establishing rapport with the subject. Now, what does that mean? Let's learn from this third line. It is rather difficult to get personal details. Why? Because they will never share their personal details. See? It is also noted that personal rapport varies from one stage to another stage. What does that mean? We'll just take a look at it in a very short while. Even school children and college students who often fill tests as part of their classwork mostly use false information. Okay. And there is no guarantee that the information is being correct. As a result, if it is, it is questionable whether data obtained from the subject is the true picture of a subject's attitude, feelings, and values, the obstacle may be reduced only by personal rapport with the subject. This is the key point in here. Okay? 
they will never share anything in full detail now remember i talked about something about uh, rapport being built from stage to stage so basically when you do a research you have to as a researcher you have to win over the trust of the people who are taking part of the research with you now the reason we do that is because a subject only opens up and gives you personal details about uh, their life when they trust you so establishing that point of rapport with the subject is very important if you don't establish rapport and you just like if you're going into a school setting you don't know the kids sitting there the kids don't know you you're just handing out a couple of uh, questionnaires you know you went up to the principal and said i'm doing a study i would like to do a questionnaire uh, if your kids can just quickly fill it out and the principal says yes you hand out the flyers or the questionnaires to the children they just quickly fill it up do you think they're going to give you the right information or accurate data no most probably they'll be filling in false information why because they don't know you and they don't need to give you any kind of personal information about them so they'll just write down what looks good on the piece of paper understand so that's why establishing rapport with the subject is so important and why it is such a challenge to research the third point is appropriate methodology what do we mean by that so let's take a look. Adaptation of an appropriate methodology is a main concern for a researcher. Okay, We take different age group subjects in a study. Sometime our target group may be one child. Sometime the subject may be an adult. Sometime he may be an old person. Okay, so what this just means is that you have people from different or individuals of different age groups taking part in studies. Because of the wide age range of subject and the variety of different areas of development that must be studied to give a composite picture, assorted methods have to be used. Okay, this is the key point here. Because of the wide age range of the subject. Okay, let me just highlight that for you. There you go. And the variety of different areas of development that must be studied. See, assorted methods have to be used. So what is the actual challenge here? We are going on and doing research on such a wide range of people of different ages and we are studying so many different areas of development it could be intelligence it could be eating habits it could be sleeping habits um, uh, interactions in social workplaces peer pressure work stress a whole lot of factors could be studied and each of these factors is different for different people and therefore you cannot use one single method to do your research you have to use many different kinds of methods this becomes a problem because different methods have to be applied in different ways and even when you do apply the research there is a problem let's read what that is cultural changes always play a role in the patterns of physical and mental development of a child now what is that and why is that causing a problem when you do a research you want to make it as accurate as possible right so you don't want any external factors interfering with the data that you're collecting unfortunately if you're doing a research a person's upbringing the cultural values that they hold will always impact the way that they develop physically and mentally so there will always be some form of tainting or some form of inaccuracy because of these various factors that are already existing within a person okay so that's the problem with methodology now we move on to the fourth one which is accuracy of data what is that accuracy of data is the fourth obstacle the data obtained from the studies is, is supposed to be accurate but inaccuracy of the data may show the picture of false information of normal development at a particular age given by the subject i know this is a very confusing line but i'll explain what that means just in a short while the data may vary in many cases such as in regard to intelligence being studied by different methods or using observational method for studying the behavior, well-being, life satisfaction or happiness. The data vary for different age levels. Okay, The accuracy of such measures is questionable even though the longitudinal approach has a methodology advantage over the cross-sectional approach, the problem of accuracy is still ever present. Okay. So what does this line here mean? Inaccuracy of the data may show the picture of false information of normal development at a particular age given by the subject. Let's say that you're doing a study on five-year-olds and you want to see uh, what is the best time for studying when you're a five-year-old. 
and you go and you do a study on a bunch of uh, let's say about 100 children in a kindergarten or or uh, yeah somewhere in uh, lkg or ukg they you're doing a study on 100 kids in ukg um, and uh, when you ask them about the time when they study the best these are kids they might try to impress you so they'll just say oh i wake up at four o'clock i wake up at five o'clock i learn best when i wake up at 5 30 and i put my feet in water kids just come up with weird answers some of them may be honest some of them may not be honest and if most of the kids come up with the same kind of answer you will reach an assumption that five-year-old children learn best when they wake up early in the morning somewhere around 4 and 5 30 in the morning which is completely wrong because the kids have given you false information and you reached a false assumption and therefore you will come up with the result saying all five-year-olds learn best at that time that's how inaccuracy of data will affect a study um, done on people in a particular age i hope you understood that and another problem that is being faced is that not only does the data vary because of false information provided data also varies because of the different methods being used to study it the results you get by using one method may be completely different from the results you get using another method so um, if you did a study on intelligence and you used one particular method for that and then you did another study but you used the observational method for that the answers that you will get or the results you will get will vary very very differently okay then the last thing is that data varies for different age levels so now there are three ways in which data can vary the first is if a person provides you false information the second is depending on the method that you're using to do your studies or your research the third is data will vary for different age levels so the data you get for a five-year-old will not be the same for a 10-year-old or a 15-year-old or a 20-year-old or even someone in old age it will always be different so these are the ways in which data varies the last aspect is the ethical aspects the ethical aspect is a difficult task for the study of lifespan development as the rights of the subject is to be considered by the researcher even if the subject is being paid by the researcher for the study. Let's just mark this here. Consent of the subject if adult and consent of parents or guardians if a child is important and necessary before data collection. These considerations also apply to younger or older subjects. So what is the main problem here? Getting consent is the problem that you face. When you say your research has to be done ethically, it means it should not be in violation of someone's rights. And if someone says they don't give you consent to take a particular amount of information about them, it means that if you do the research, you are in violation of their personal rights, which makes your study non-ethical. So even, sometimes what happens is even if uh, subjects are being paid to be part of the research, they refuse to give out information or they say, please don't include that information in your study being an ethical researcher you will not be able to include that particular part of information and the same goes with children when you're doing a study on children the parents and the guardians have to give consent if they don't give consent you can't use the data so i hope this information was very very uh, explanatory to you it was very clear to you i am also going to put some slides out here so you can look through that and take down notes if you need and at the end of uh, the slide display, I will leave this video with a closing message for you. Thank you. These are notes on the first two uh, points that we talked about, representative sample and establishing rapport. Uh, you can take notes by pausing this video and then you can continue. These are notes on the appropriate method to be used and the accuracy of data. And this is the final slide which is the ethical aspects so there's a note that i told you i wanted to leave you guys with this is it um you see i've been getting a lot of requests from people saying they want the portions quickly covered so they can be ready in time for the exams and i completely understand that but unfortunately since i'm working um preparing the slides and then the video and everything is taking a lot of time already so i'm only able to cover one topic at a time but I do understand that you want your portions covered as well. So from now on, I'll be taking the classes, but I will not be providing the notes.
because I think the classes are self-explanatory. You will understand by the time I finish explaining everything. And I'm sure that you can just pause the video in between and write down your own notes. But doing it this way will help me produce more content and also make sure that you guys are ready for the exam when it becomes time for the exam. And I hope you understand this decision that I've taken. So um, if you have anything to tell me, if there's any comments you'd like to leave me, please do leave it below. If you like the video, please hit a thumbs up and also don't forget to share and subscribe. I hope to see you in the next class. Thank you so much.